Excellent. Well, good. Okay. We, so we have Nawa and Victoria. How are you? Welcome, Nawa. Good to have you. Yeah, I wasn't able to make it last month. So. Well, I'm glad you're here now. Well, good. And Victoria, are you there? Let's see. We might be... You might need to unmute your microphone, Victoria. It looks like you're muted. Um, so for us to be able to hear you, you'll have to get your microphone connected and, oh, I guess it's not even connected. Okay, so we'll give Victoria a second to get on here. Okay, Nawa, did you get to read The, the Alchemist? Absolutely, yes. Excellent. Um, was this your first time reading it? Yes, yes. Okay. And it's, uh, again, you know, uh, the fiction type of book is not uh, the, the real book that I like to read, you know, but I read it. Uh -huh. uh, and I like this book. It's just uh, the overall uh, some, uh, you know, a few minor things that you kind of always think about it, but never follow through. It's mm -hmm. a good reminder on, on those things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, maybe it's changed my perception towards the fiction books. You know, I may probably go read a couple more and uh, see what it does. But yeah. I never I never read any fiction books. I, I'm always a nonfiction uh, type of book. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I like. Uh, but this uh, gave me a little bit of a different perspective on uh, how those books are written and was it there was basically the, I like the book very much because it gave me those reminders on mm -hmm. something that we know but we never mm -hmm. think through and follow through yes yes I, I'm like you I always read nonfiction books <laughs> and so <laughs> it was a switch for me because yeah. we actually choose chose this book because um because some of our students were saying, well, what about fiction? Because I had done a couple of nonfiction in a row, because that's what I'm comfortable with <laughs> and what, what I've read. Yeah. And so finally I got a recommendation with this book and I thought, okay, we'll give it a, we'll give it a try. And I'm like you where I, um, now that I've read this, it opened my mind to be like, okay, I think, you know, more fiction would be, would be a good thing for me. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's good all right victoria it looks like you're here your your microphone is muted i'm gonna unmute you real quick here and see victoria you there are you hearing me hi yes i do hear you hi hi okay so you can decide whether you want to turn on your video or not um but you kind of have control yeah, of that. Won't, but uh, one, one second uh, uh, I think now, yeah, you can okay. see me. Perfect. Hi, Hi Victoria. <laughs> yeah. Good to have you here. So we have Nawa. Wave Nawa. So we have Nawa and uh, Radwan on the call as well. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, uh, read the book that you are speaking about, but I wanted to uh, join to join their uh, meeting for the next time. Yeah. I'll know what to do and what uh, is going in, in this meeting. Perfect, so. good, I'm glad you're here then. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. um, it'll be good to kind of see how a discussion like this works so that as we get into the next month, you can yeah. know what More to expect prepared. and prepare mm -hmm. for. Yeah, and I don't know how long I, will, I, I, I can, uh, uh, will be I can join you because I have a baby go to sleep with my baby so oh, okay yeah <laughs> I understand I have an 11 month old myself so <laughs> so uh, but thankfully he's taken care of right now um, so yeah any as long as you need to be you can decide whether you need the video on or off depending on your situation and okay. same with the um, the microphone as well okay <laughs> Okay. okay, excellent. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share. Um, we'll go ahead and share my screen here. 
Um, I usually prepare a bit of a PowerPoint presentation to kind of keep keep things moving along and and structure it a little bit um, so we have some framework you what I read this book oh yeah. good <laughs> so you have read this book good okay yeah. then perfect then we'll we'll uh, kind of refresh your mind how long ago was it mm -hmm. was it a while ago that you read it or recently I think may I think maybe eight years ago but oh, okay. i remember i have a good uh, memory so i remember okay. good uh, excellent the text oh perfect then <laughs> all right so yeah the book this month was the alchemist um and i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name paulo does anybody know i was i i hello oh um Holy, holy, our oh, holy in Russian. And okay. Oh, okay, so. Yeah, for some reason, I think we are uh, missing the audio connection or something. Oh, really? For me? I'm not hearing anything. Hmm. So you don't hear me, Nawa? What about you, Radwan? Is the audio working? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine? Okay. Nawa, I'm going to let you kind of fiddle with it a little bit and see if we can get it working better. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so The Alchemist uh, was the book this month. It's a, it's a fictional book. Um, and the author, so a little bit about the author. He's uh, Brazilian, and it was originally written in Portuguese. And it is one of the best-selling books of all time, of history, in history. Um, so it kind of is in, it's on that, um, kind of on that list of best-selling books. It has sold, as of, as of recently, 83 million copies and translated in 81 different languages. 81 different languages. Um, here, let me try something real quick. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys kind of talk. I'm gonna keep, keep moving along here. Um, all right, here we go. So one thing I wanted to talk about just from the beginning is why do you think it is such a popular book? And what's, what's interesting to me about the number of languages that it's translated into is that this topic is obviously a universal topic, something that applies across all cultures and kind of the human experience. Um, why do you think that this book relates to so many people? across so many different cultures? Maybe because it's easy to read and it's a, a, something like a, a story for young people, something with a happy end. Okay. And people uh, who read it tell to other people to read and uh, Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Okay. I think it's a lot of uh, reasons and uh, maybe it's a commercial work. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about uh, Nawa, are you back? What about you, Radwan? Yeah, uh, I'm just noticing that this book uh, first published in 1988. Mm -hmm. And this this is really a uh, long time before any uh, modern uh, modern research or to, uh, coming up to the service about the to about the uh, uh, alchemists or alch alchemism or uh, power of uh, you know vision and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe it it was one of the pioneering books 
regarding uh, spiritual powers and how how man can handle things uh, spiritually how can uh, things happen uh, depending on consequences and how can uh, alchemism work and so it's it's i think it's something really uh, um, not that uh, new but it's uh, i mean it, it was an advancement in the in the way people see things that's why it was really popular and familiar uh, famous among different uh, countries okay yeah yeah so there's there's kind of there's a definitely a spiritual side to this book right there's kind of a deeper spiritual side um to the human experience and paulo's experience as he or sorry not paulo santiago's experience as he as he goes through this journey and the discovery process within this journey now are you there now i might still be working on it okay so there were a number of themes throughout this book um one of them, they talk about the pers your own personal legend. That's a very big theme across the book is your own legend is kind of your personal mission or your journey or your purpose in life. And Santiago's discovering, going through the process of discovering his own. Um, well, and we're gonna go through some of these themes in more detail, but the, the danger of fear and how fear can kind of keep us from from accomplishing that personal legend. Um, he talks a lot about a universal language um, and how there was this discovery of a universal language that, um, that transcended language barrier and even from human to um, animal, you know, and the very, you know, just very nature, um, the sands, sand of the desert, the trees, the plants, the animals, um, this discovery of a universal language, and a theme of the purification of the soul. Um, that being really brought into the theme of the actual title, The Alchemist, and what The Alchemist is. Um, and I'm sure there's many, many other themes that can be found through this book, but these were some of the ones that um, seem to kind of pop up more. Did anybody think of any other themes that, and we'll, we'll circle back around to this as we go through, but um, can you think of any other themes that popped out to you? I think it's uh, looking for love. So he is the boy. <laughs> Loved, uh, fall in, fall in love, and he was looking for this, and he wanted to uh, feel this feeling. So, mm -hmm. so there is an element of love. There's two different experiences he has with that feeling yeah. um, and that experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody else? Yeah, he. I felt in some way or another. The, the guy was uh, after finding God, like he talked about God in different occasions. Mm -hmm. so he was just like searching God and uh, he talked uh, once about the, about the language of the world and it is immersed in the uh, soul of God. And so he found that, that he can, uh, alchemist is all about uh, knowing that our souls is part of soul of God uh, so that we can change or do anything we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, once we know that we are that powerful, that we, we belong to the source, uh, the source is really everything, and everything is one. So uh, he, mm -hmm. he found God in his way, even though he traveled through the Arabian land, and they, they knew the God very well. They prayed for the God all the time. But maybe that was because of their religion. Uh, he was in real search for for God. Mm -hmm. So he was he was an active searcher for God. He didn't accept uh, a certain religion, uh, the, but he kept searching for the soul, for the God, for the source, and he could find some glimpses that he it led him to the source and to the to understand the language of the world. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and exactly what you're talking about. It was all connected. It all kind of seemed to come together and all one big whole for him, recognizing that, you know, the universe, the universe or God, you know, however he describes it through the book is all working together and everybody, there's kind of this, this, um, it all comes together in one whole um, nature and everyone's mission, their, everyone's personal mission and purpose and the way that that um, connects with each other and connects with nature and connects with the world around them. Um, there is a very much a, a, a theme of that higher purpose and that higher um, of God and, and, and him kind of working his, <laughs> her, working his purpose through, through the people in the book. That's awesome. Anyone else have uh, any other themes that kind of popped up to them? You know, that's the other thing I think it is the unquestionable faith of believing on it. And, you know, it's uh, something uh, I think, you know, not necessarily uh, in a good or bad way, but that unquestionable aspect of doing something. I don't know how, how realistic that in, you know, is the book itself is a fiction book. So that's probably not a good question to ask, but that is to me something, you know, is it really a practical approach there or is just uh, mm -hmm. being a fiction? Right. Yeah. Cause it, it does kind of take you into a different realm and a different sphere to think think on a higher plane and see other people and this these themes going on um and whether everything's very practical i mean he turns into wind at the end right it's, <laughs> obviously it's a, <laughs> a fictional situation but the metaphors and the themes and the symbolism i think is what he's trying to get out of it all right so speaking of that, there are a lot of symbols and, and me personally, like Nawa, I tend to do more of the nonfiction books, very clear and precise. They, there's not a lot of symbolism in nonfiction. It's just, um, they tell you what it is and, and um, there's not a lot of reading too far deep into it. And that's how my brain tends to work. I don't see symbolism right away. It takes a little bit of um, research and discovery. So I actually did have to, I went and researched some things on um, the alchemist of like, what are the themes? What are, what are some of the symbolism? What, is, what does this all mean? And what are they trying to get at? And the more I researched that, the more interesting the book got to me, <laughs> actually, uh, because I didn't see it at first. And what was your experience with kind of the symbolism and and reading it with that those different perspectives? You know, I, uh, yeah, I also did the same thing. You know, it's not, you know, alchemy itself. Is, it, this is the first time I heard of the word. Same here. I, yeah. I, didn't, I, I didn't know the meaning of it, or I didn't know, you know what does that exactly mean. Mm -hmm. Plus. There are definitely, you know, you have those uh, few items there, uh, you know, of those, maybe you know, I, I was a little uh, bit on more research on what a gypsy does and, you know, what would they actually do or what, what their role was. And the king, being a king and just being available anywhere just uh, for, a, for a purpose, I was also looking at that as a symbol say, okay, it's not anything specific, but it is, this is just for power. Okay? It's not mm -hmm. that king is not really a king. It's just uh, the superpower or uh, helping uh, the boy go through his dream mm -hmm. or analyze it or interpret it in the right way and take it to the right place. That's how I take it. I, I try to make sense of a crystal merchant, and I could not make a lot of sense out of that other than just that is the, the interim uh, go away route for or interim 
stoppage point for the boy to get to his dream. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, that whole thing, that was kind of a little bit, I, I tried to make a little bit more sense, but I wasn't able to do that. The big, the big thing I got from the crystal merchant section of it is that contrast between Santiago being very adamant about discovering his dream or I mean at that point he had kind of lost vision of the dream and he was just trying to get back to his sheep right um so he wasn't as active but he was really striving to grow and improve whereas the crystal merchant had kind of been uh, more complacent more um he was okay with the way he his life was he had this dream to go on, um, to go to Mecca, I think that was what it was. And, yep. but he, but even when he was in a place to do it, his, I think there, there were some sayings or some quotes in there talking about the, the idea of it was good enough for him. <laughs> Just the idea of having a dream, not necessarily actually doing the dream, was enough for him. So that brought out a theme of, is it, what do you, what do you agree with? Is it better to just have a dream, even if you're not going to pursue it? Or is it actual pursuit of the dream that is going to bring that fulfillment? Victoria and Radwan, do you have any I kind of think thoughts on the, on either the crystal merchant or symbolism in general? Uh, what was the question is? So do you have any thoughts about either the crystal merchant or some of the symbolism that you that you got out of the book? Uh, if I understood right the question, so you asked if it's better to have a dream mm -hmm. or not to have a dream. So uh, to have a dream and do something for this or not to have a dream at all, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I. Uh, I think that it's better to do something for this because if not, I will feel uh, not good with me that I have something, I want something very much and I don't, uh, uh, I can't reach it. I, do, I don't uh, uh, make something for this. So mm -hmm. I think that it's better to have a dream and maybe step by step, by little step, uh, uh, reach the propose with your dream mm -hmm. maybe uh, not in all uh, maybe not all dreams that you think about it in the beginning but the process is uh, but the process of reaching is interesting too not only the uh, result of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of this so um, yeah, it's the process of working towards that dream. Well, you're, you're right, the process of working towards that dream, not just the treasure that he got at the end. It wasn't just about the treasure, it was about the process in between and in, in working towards that dream. Even if the process is not so nice like as a result, I think that if I need to do something, and I know that I don't uh, have any choice not to do it. So mm -hmm. I said, I said to myself, to en to to enjoy, it's better than to suffer. So mm -hmm. if I know that I have to do something, I will be better enjoy it than uh, suffer from the process. And, yeah. And I start to love what I do. What That's I'm awesome. doing. That's awesome. You, re you realize that it's more about the mindset along the way than it is about the actual process and what you're going through. It's, it's what you do and your, your mindset and your attitude about it that makes the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Radwan, you have any thoughts? <laughs> A lot of thoughts here. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, Crystal Merchant, I believe he's an ordinary man who mm -hmm. uh, just uh, don't have the enough courage to pursue his dreams. Mm -hmm. And it happens with everybody else. Like uh, everybody wants to be a leader or something, but he's doing another job completely different from what he's wishing to be. 
and you find a teacher in school and she wished to be a model and you find a model who wished to be a doctor and it's it's it happens with everybody almost so people get afraid from pursuing their dreams and they pursue some other people's dream and it happens like they love the idea they are more convinced that if they do this uh, they, they will be settled or they will be just fine mm -hmm. so they don't want to be in danger zone they just want to be safe uh, according to what life provides them mm -hmm. they don't want to take take the extra efforts and follow pursuing their dreams and risking everything they have so we have seen through all the story that the the boy rescued everything uh, for many times Mm -hmm. And he was even uh, beaten, uh, you know, he, he was even, uh, uh, he lost his old belongings mm -hmm. for two, three times during the story. It means that pursuing one's dream is really uh, risky. So mm -hmm. people don't, take, don't like to take the risk. They would like to settle for the simplest thing they have. And this is the crystal merchant, it doesn't like everybody, normal people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for symbolism, like the gypsies, uh, the gypsy was really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. This is a hidden wisdom, you know, some people who travel a lot, even though they don't have much money, but they have much wisdom. Mm -hmm. So these people are interesting. I, I was fascinated by the, by the rule of gypsy, gypsy. The desert is also perfect. We have a lot of desert in this type mm -hmm. of this part of world. And I believe the desert is a great place to to clear your mind, to get you know, to get some uh, uh, spiritual peace. But it's really dangerous place. He well described it uh, in this book because it's really uh, surviving the desert is not something easy. It's just mm. not like the forest area or any other uh, geographical area. It's really hard condition. You need to be. Um, you know, you need to, to adapt for new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, for the rest, alchemy is really, uh, it's, it's uh, the major point of this book is about alchemy. And uh, uh, everybody is looking, like he, he gives three, three different classes of people. People who try to make gold out of uh, metal so that they become rich. And these mm -hmm. people, they will never come to, 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 to make gold. But the, the other people who try hard to make gold out of lead, uh, but they're trying the wrong way. But the only people who can, who try to change their self first so that they can change all the conditions around them mm -hmm. accordingly, uh, those who are really the real alchemists. Mm. Awesome. All right, Radwan's our, our symbolism guy. It seems like he, you're, you're catching into the symbolism a lot more maybe <laughs> of understanding what some of these might mean because I was like, Nawa, I had to look up alchemy. <laughs> that, was a, that was a new, uh, new term for me. Um, I didn't even know what an alchemist was. Um, I hadn't been exposed to that. And some of these, some of these symbols through it, the more understanding you have of a certain thing, like broad one for you, the desert is a very real applicable thing. Um, you understand what it is to be in the desert and, um, and what conditions would be like that would be versus someone who's never really been into the desert. Um, that would be a new concept to them. So I think we bring our own individual understandings and our experiences into this. and. Um, and that's what's kind of fun is that new vocabulary as well and new, um, uh, even for myself. <laughs> All right, so let's go through just some of the, the main themes um, and talk a little bit about more in depth about some of those main themes. We've touched on several of them already, but um, when it comes to personal legend, um, Nawa, will you go ahead and read this quote for us? Whoever you are, or whatever it is that you do, when you really want something, it's because that desire originated in the soul of the universe. It's your mission on earth. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's ta really talking to that personal legend, that personal purpose that is a, a theme here of who's going to pursue their purpose. Are you really going to go after it? And when you really, and one advantage I think that um, Santiago had was he had this very profound experience with the king at the beginning where he could come back to that and say, no, that experience was real. I saw a king, you know, I met with a king and he really, he knew things that he, that no one else would know. And he, you know, encouraged me, really strongly encouraged me to, to start this journey. Um, and that, that, that purpose was a very, um, strong thing for them. I don't think it always, I mean, obviously it's not always that strong <laughs> for all of us, but, um, but what was your kind of understanding of that, um, of that personal edge on purpose and how that relates to you personally or people in general? I guess this. Go ahead. I, I say in, in general, or maybe I, I will get into personal um, experience. As far as myself or my experience is concerned, I have a professional personal legend that I kind of always follow through a very um, renowned, um, very humble, uh, kind uh, man, man who retired maybe after 50 years of service in the field. He is a kind of, you know, he's my go by reference. Whenever I have something, confusion or anything I want, whenever I get into any kind of trouble, just remembering him gives me a power to kind of get through that and think about it differently. Thinking through and the way uh, he led us uh, in the past, you know, the thinking process he developed, you know, in the time of difficulty, uh, make, make me kind of go through the same uh, thinking process and get out of those uh, difficulties or solve complex problem. Mm. In, in general, and I have seen uh, others as well doing more or less a, a kind of having some kind of uh, go by uh, inspirational or motivational sources that they uh, thought about it or they follow that put it steps to uh, get around problems or uh, solve problems on hand, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of, but yeah, it's absolutely uh, it's not um, what you are at some point, but uh, who you are and how you go through that process defines you at the time. Mm -hmm. I like how you bring that, that concept of a mentor, and in my mind, I'm thinking the, the connection between the mentor and the king. Um, your mentor and the king, you know, and how, you know, whenever you're coming across challenges like Santiago did as he went through the thing, he was able to think back to the king and his experience with the king and that initial feeling and those, those feelings that he had in connection with pursuing this dream um, and how that relates to you and how you think back on that mentor when you come across certain challenges of, you know, how, how should I handle this situation based on, you know, what the mentor, my mentor would do or um, how he would guide me. So that's a great connection there. Anyone else? I, I think we, that we talk only in a, positive um, things, but let's think about something negative. Okay. Because, um, I, I think that there are people who have uh, not so good um, dreams, like uh, have um, all of the money of the world or have a, a, a 
something that can kill another people and it's their dreams so if you think about it uh, can we can we say that the universe helped them too to achieve their dreams mm. I, 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 because we thought only about the good things but what about the bad things anybody else oh, have thoughts on that is universe know to um, to help to uh, good people or not yeah. to help to bad people yeah that's interesting anybody else any uh, anyone have thoughts on that actually i i believe it's uh it's been hard like it says like if you want something really from deep from inside your heart then the life will help you all over the process but sometimes this is not the the thing like especially in our modern time like you you, you rely more on people you know just like if i want to travel for example and i want this so bad so i can't just travel i just need a visa and i'll apply they will ask for bank account, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not that problem for you because you are American, but maybe for people from other part of worlds, like they they make a lot of restrictions, mm -hmm. so you can't travel easily. Just provide a bank account, other stuff. So when you need something, sometimes it's not in your hand. Mm -hmm. But if there if there if there is God will is there, you know, uh, who uh, whoever uh, whatever God uh, has decided for you, what what they have being described here as maktub. Maktub is an Arabic word that's seen, it's written. So it's really like uh, we believe here in this part of the world uh, as uh, that most of our faith uh, or whatever we, what happened in the future, it's all maktub. So it's, it's already written. So we don't worry much because if it didn't happen, it's no problem because it's already have been written or if it happened the wrong way, so it's no problem. Like Just like it gives you some sort of uh, cooling or relaxation because you you, you, don't, you don't have to worry about things because it have been already written mm -hmm. before so this is the thing but sometimes it's, it's unfair like you know it's not it's out of one's hand but what this book insists that one should keep trying uh, this is the the key uh, thing here the cornerstone that you keep trying you pursue your dreams you be insistent and uh, try to f follow your path uh, till the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any thoughts, Nawa? Yeah, just to add on that one, um, the challenges are there. Challenges are but now, well, real quick, can you put get a little bit closer to the microphone or speak up a little bit more? Because occasionally you'll. Oh, you're oh okay. I, I get confused. Yeah, oh, there I, we go. I'm on my, so, okay. That's, oh, okay. That's, it's just, <laughs> yes, for some reason, my uh, computer audio system did not work. Just, oh, okay. It stopped in the middle. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, to add on, just a simple point is the challenges are there. You know, I think no matter what. Uh, what you are or what you do uh, i think that the main point is mainly keep chasing your dream uh, regardless of those challenges maybe one day you will reach to that point at some point mm -hmm. you will reach to that destination mm -hmm. uh, mainly i like to say in the, the way maybe failing is an option mm -hmm. you, the failure is not a problem but giving up is a problem that that's what they're saying is do not give up mm -hmm. failure in between these are acceptable these are you will learn from those failures but if you give up then you stop the process of learning and mm -hmm. that by that mean you fail to reach your destination mm -hmm. yeah that fear of failure kind of goes into that next um that next theme there of that failure that uh, that we get so scared of or losing something um, that might be important to us. Um, Radwan, do you mind uh, reading this quote here? Okay. Uh, we are afraid of losing what we have, whether life is our pro uh, po 
with our life or our positions mm -hmm. or our property. But this is hidden here. This what? <laughs> I don't know. The videos are in my way too. Are they in your yeah. way? <laughs> here, this like fear. Yeah. Okay. This fear evaporates when we understand that our life stories are the history of the world we written by the same hand. <clears throat> Camel driver. Okay. So this kind of goes back to what Radwan, what you were talking about, um, is that that Mac what is it? Mac two Mac the Mac two. <laughs> okay. Mac two. Of um of the it's part of the it, you know it's meant to be it's written by the same hand that is writing the whole universe and the whole world and is orchestrating everything so if something happens then it's meant to happen my question with that concept is then how much how how does that motivate you in terms of if if i'm motivated to do something versus oh i'm just going to sit back and see what happens because mac 2 right because yeah. uh, it's going to be what it's going to be so why should it's... i try versus <laughs> okay i'm going to try but then whatever happens happens you know what i mean where's the ba is... balance for you it's interesting mm -hmm. uh, it's actually about the faith like if you have faith like for, for me uh, 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 my religion say you, you have you need to have faith in God so I believe there is God and, and there's angels mm -hmm. and there is there is a, you know a message from God there's books coming from God uh, and there's prophets I believe in all the prophets and the last thing I have to believe in after God angels books and prophets is the faith is the maktub Mm -hmm. either good or bad so i if, if i got stretch you know it's maktub if i got disease i got ill then it's maktub so i believe in good and bad that's whatever is written there it's all maktub mm -hmm. so uh, you you have the choice because you can choose you know you mm -hmm. can choose to to join this video or not mm -hmm. but either you did choose it or not this has already been maktub to you so God, because you believe in God, before you believe in Maktub, you know that God has chosen this way for you. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a basically a rule and belief that you believe that God is, uh, have almighty power and he had already written what, whatever you gonna happen in your life. And mm -hmm. this will not be changed. This in part can't affect your, uh, uh, persistency, but it can affect the way you feel about things. Like mm -hmm. if you got something good, you will not feel that good, you know, because mm -hmm. it's already maktub for you, so you will not be that proud. And if if you got something bad in your way of life, you don't feel that bad as well, because you know that it's already maktub. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So it's some modesty, you know, it's nice. It keeps, keeps you being from being too proud and keeps you being, from being too, too, down. too down, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Victoria, you have something? Yeah, I think about it and I uh, think that it's natural for human that we want to success. But sometimes it doesn't happen. And the feeling of uh, losing, it's not feeling that can mo motivate us. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people, because of the uh, fear of this feeling, don't, they don't want to try. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that it's, um, I think that to move something to, uh, to, uh, to do, you have to do something, you can sit and not to do and only believe that it will be happened by uh, the God. Mm -hmm. I, I think that people who believe in the God, it's a good and it's a, a, a religion can help to people be better, but only to believe and not to do by themselves, not try, don't to try something. I think that it's, um, um, 
how I can say it, that not something that God wants us to do. <laughs> To, right. to be. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I I think that uh, uh, we have to do something by my, by ourselves to try, mm -hmm. and if if uh, we uh, don't accomplish our uh, dreams, mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, the end of the world. Mm -hmm. So we will have in the future uh, another opportunity mm -hmm. to. Or accomplish it, or maybe something better, or maybe something interesting mm -hmm. more. Mm, so, uh, and uh, uh, from my experience, I see that sometimes that I feel not good because I lo lose something mm -hmm. in the future. I will receive a better, um, a better uh, uh, thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, life is interesting, and we have to <laughs> we, we have to feel this. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a there's a good balance there. Mm -hmm. Like there's yeah. the fear. You kind of have to have a balance when it comes to fear. You can have too much fear, and it keeps you from doing the things yeah. that you really should be doing. And but fear is also a motivator because you you know say you you fear you fear being homeless yeah so you're you being homeless so you want to work hard or you feel fear kind of that being being poor or poverty or not having the money that you need so it motivates you to work hard to have yeah. what you need and so there is a balance there of what's enough fear to keep you motivated but not too much fear to keep you from from doing do things, yeah, doing things yeah. that you really know you should be doing or you want to be doing, um, just because you're afraid of what might happen or might not happen in the future. Yeah. Mm hmm that's good, that's good. Nawa, do you have any thoughts about this like, concept of fear and? No, uh, I think I already uh, spoke about a little bit on Yeah and the failure, giving up and the failure. Um, really, uh, maybe just a little bit on uh, the Musab, you know, it's, it's written there. You know, even in my culture, there is uh, something like that. You know, something uh, is there, it's going to happen, uh, and no matter what, it, it doesn't change. So, mm -hmm. Do I believe on it? Um, I'm not quite a believer on that, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the cultural demand, uh, is there a cultural demand or the social uh, acceptance of that? Yes. Um, so I cannot sit back and expect some, something to happen. And also mm -hmm. what I don't want to do is, I don't want to know today what's going to happen tomorrow. It's, uh, with that, if I know something good is going to happen tomorrow, you know, I may be overexcited today just to wait for tomorrow. And with that excitement, I may or may not be alive tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I know something bad is going to happen, yeah, I may be worrying about that thing to happen mm -hmm. before it actually happens. Mm -hmm. So that's a, so for that reason, I kind of uh, just uh, I try to keep a little bit out of that but, uh, personally, but my culture is that the accepted of social acceptance, it is absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think you just described faith and fear right there is that with a kind of a faith-based mindset you're expecting good things to happen tomorrow <laughs> you know that's kind of and you know taking religion out of it just faith that something's going to be better in the future or we're going to succeed in something or good is going to happen versus like you just described if i knew something bad was going to happen i'm going to have more fear i'm going to have more fear in that and worry and concern that's going to keep me from 
getting to tomorrow <laughs> and to, you know, cause, cause a lot of stress and problems knowing that something bad might happen. And I think that that right there is that contrast between if that faith kind of faith attitude and, and for you, you don't want to know something good's going to happen because it, it's too much excitement, right? You, you're kind of, you don't really want that, right? Yeah. Okay. I want to, yeah, I, I kind of want to go in a, uh, a developed, uh, you know, a little bit of a, not the not I'm not the fixed mindset. You know, I definitely want to move along with the growth mindset. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to know is good or bad that's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. I will let tomorrow decide it. Okay. The uh, the you know I don't want to. In I think. I'm not uh, sure if uh, everyone had a chance to kind of uh, listen that to video I shared on our group oh, and it's super kind of a viral, uh, um, what is that, uh, girl from Pakistan? Oh, yeah. Punjabi, uh, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, that's kind of say, you know, don't die before you actually die. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the, the point I take it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Oh, and the, the point that I made here, or I was kind of looking at here when it comes to that, that fear with Santiago, he, you know, there were many points along the story that he was fearing what was, you know, my fearing either losing something he has or either his life or possessions or property. And um, he had really had to struggle with that fear all along the path. Um, and with like the crystal merchant, we talked about how his fear was that Mecca wouldn't be that amazing, as amazing as he thought it would be. And so that fear of losing that concept of what it would be kept him from actually doing it. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, go ahead. Yeah, it's the fear that creates time, you know. And uh, Sufis said like, uh, Time is the only thing that prevail God from our side. And I believe it's true. Like, if you want to be present at the moment and to achieve things, we have seen the boy that uh, needed to meditate to go to the, uh, to reach to a status that he can understand the language of the world. Mm -hmm. So he used to just stay silent for long hours in the desert mm -hmm. or just watching from the mountain or from the hills or watching the sky for uh, several hours from the old church so that he could relax his mind. And this is this, this meditation, simply this meditation. So he could connect to the, to, to the vast universe and go deep to the language of the world. And this means th there's no time. He's, he's connected. Uh, uh, fear creates time and time reveal one from going to the language of the world or going deep inside himself or uh, be connected with the one thing that's everything is all around yeah. so whenever you are afraid from something you either think about future or past you create time and if you are afraid from something if for example let's say i just it's my first time to uh, meet with uh, uh, noah and i say that noah is a a weird guy from other part of the world and I don't want to talk to him because I'm afraid he makes me problems, okay? I will never come to know this is a nice guy and he's, he's uh, intelligent and talent because I'm afraid, you know? Mm -hmm. I put time in, uh, in between. Uh, and it happens for the people who are afraid from past experiences. So they will, not, they will not marry again. They will not do other things because they're afraid. You say, I have married and it was really a bad thing. I will not do it again. So they didn't give, their, give their, 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 their selves another chances. So fear is creating a time and creating a time. Uh, it means you will be trapped inside that time and mm -hmm. you will not be able to be connected to the language of the world as the boy described. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I've never thought of that in terms of time, but that makes sense to me. And actually what Nawa was saying is he was saying he doesn't want to have that factor of time. He wants to be in the present moment <laughs> and stay in that moment so that he doesn't have to have that fear. <laughs> I think that was good. 
that kind of tied it all in. That's great. Okay, so you touched on that universal uh, language. Oh, go ahead, Nawa. Did you have? We, we have, uh, and again, uh, if I said it right, you know, I don't think she has opportunity to give anything there. So it, I, don't, I want to make sure she's not feeling she's ignored. Okay, Victoria. Did you have some not thoughts Victoria. on that? Yeah, Nugen. Oh, sorry. I don't see. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. I am so sorry. I was on a setting that I couldn't see everyone. Okay, so we have, we have much more than I... Let, thank you, Nawa, for letting me know. So we have... Uh, when? Is that... Hi. Uh, hi. Um, I go with Cindy. I go by Cindy. Cindy, so okay. Call me Cindy. Okay, Cindy, welcome. Welcome. I apologize. I didn't realize that you were it, <laughs> had more videos going on. <laughs> okay, who else is here? We have. Yeah, that's all I can I can see. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, Yothi, and then I can't see a name on here. Let me just kind of pull up the videos real quick. Yothi and Carlos, welcome, Carlos. Uh, hi, Annie. I apologize. Uh, How are you? <laughs> no, no problem. I'm learning a lot. Good. Uh, yeah, okay. In my first time here, yeah. I prefer listen. Uh, okay. Maybe. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. Okay. Nice to meet you. We'll definitely jump in as you need. So, Cindy, did you, have you, uh, were you able to read the book? Uh, I haven't read a book yet. Okay. So good. So you'll get a chance to kind of listen in on and maybe pick up a copy when you uh, when you're when you can. Yeah. All right. Excellent, Cindy. Do you have any thoughts on kind of some of the things that we've been discussing? You talking to me? Yeah, Cindy. Do you have any kind of thoughts about that that concept of fear and 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 uh, we've been talking? I, I'm not sure how how long you've been listening, but. I mean, like, uh, I think fear is have two side, negative side and positive side. Mm -hmm. Like, say something, sometimes we fear being, like, harmless, so we try to work harder. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think fear is good, too, because, like, according to the Bible, they say, uh, it say that the beginning of the wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So if we fear of the Lord, so we don't, we, we're not going to do anything bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, to be sinful, you know, but sometimes fear is not good too, like I'm uh, trying to get into medical school and I have to take the MCAT, but the thing to keep me back is, is the fear because whenever I study and English is my, my biggest struggle, so I just keep, keep being fear and then I, I haven't taken it yet. Oh, okay. Um, that's it. Yeah. So we got to make sure that that, you know, that is a motivator, but it doesn't keep us from, yeah. from really pursuing that purpose and that dream. Well, I think fear is good too, but we, we should touch on its positive, positive side, not on the negative side. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yothi, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. I can see that there's a... Yeah, hi. Hi. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Sorry, actually I joined late. I think I missed a few things, then most of the things, but I just wanted to join and get the feel of how the book club will be so next time I can be, be prepared for it and definitely not ready for the video thing. Okay. So. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't need a video on us. <laughs> um, well, good. Yeah, I'm glad you're here and can get a feel for how um, how these book clubs go. We really just kind of dive into the discussion of it all um, and and give everyone a chance to to not only discuss their their thoughts on the topics, but you know it's a great place to practice English and to um, and just to explore different vocabulary and ways of um, thinking. So welcome. Oh, thank you. That's you have any thoughts on what you've heard so far? Uh, about fear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like everybody, I mean, like 
we need to know how to balance the fear, which mm -hmm. is not like uh, it's like both good and bad. Uh, it's like uh, so. Yeah. Just know where to balance it. Not taking everything for granted or not fearing for every small thing, which will stop you even for thinking. You should know. so. Mm -hmm. it's all about that. Yes. And also, off the off the topic, I really I'm really scared to talk in front of a group. So I think I'll do this. <laughs> well, good this for group. you for overcoming that fear. <laughs> and we're in talking with us. I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's what this is all about. Is if this is a situation that makes you scared, then let's let's uh, make sure that we get some practice in that so that it doesn't doesn't scare you next time. Yeah, definitely. This all these sessions are really helpful. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm lazy to talk or I'm afraid to talk, but somehow when it is a group, I try not to talk as much. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. be a good teacher, but that will not work every day. So I need to practice to. So I'll use this for the next book club. I'll be ready. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad you're here and that we're uh, we're getting to the core of some of that fear because I think that you're. I mean, that's a very common experience for all of all of our students. Is we uh, is that that fear sometimes keeps us from getting the practice that we need in our you know in the in your English and being able to really dive deep into English because when you dive deep you have to practice more you have to engage more you have to try new new topics and new ideas to discuss if you just stay in that area that's comfortable for you um, then there won't be that growth like there can be when you do step out into that area that makes you scared <laughs> I mean, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, go uh, ahead, Carlos. Uh, what's the name um, of the book you are discuss? So it's called The Alchemist. I think I don't know if that's Ah, right. okay, Alchemist. Oh, sorry. Have you read this one? Yeah, I know. I read a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a very uh, yeah. famous this, one. So this writer is is Brazilian. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm from Brazil. So oh, there you I, go. I, I know um, Paulo Coelho. Okay. Okay, Thank excellent. You. Yeah, so chime in as you uh, have some thoughts here. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and, and, and for all of those who are here, if you have questions or you have input, go ahead and put it in. I know that we're, um, we've taken up the hour. I'm okay to keep going for a little bit, for a while longer if, um, uh, if everyone else is. If you need to leave, I understand. Um, that we're kind of going, going ahead here. Um, Anna, before I leave in, uh -huh. I want to, hi, before I leave in, I wanted to thank you very much. It was very excited, exciting. It was my first experience, uh -huh. and I hope that I will join you in the future every time. It was very motivated for me. Oh, good. And yeah, I will keep uh, studying. Perfect. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you very much. I'm so glad yeah. I had you here. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye, Victoria. Bye. Excellent. Okay, so we've kind of gone into that uh, that theme of fear and have talked uh, a lot of that about that going into that universal language, and we've kind of talked about this universal language a little bit more, a um, little bit throughout the 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 group and um and Radwan really touched on this talking about how that meditation allowed him to really get into uh really learn that language right that 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 meditation is what allowed him to understand that universal language that was being spoken not not a verbal language that we think of language but um something much deeper than that does anybody else have any thoughts about this concept of the un or this theme that was through the book about universal language it's not just a, a theme it's just it's just like more uh, a reality like mm -hmm. the, the the modern science has proven that even you know ants 
can talk in between each other. They have communication and language mm -hmm. that we can't understand. Even the, pl the plants, you need to talk well to your plants so that they can grow well. Mm -hmm. So they, they can understand, they can get you and they can under uh, talk to each other. So it's, it's just like every uh, species in, uh, in, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the face of the uh, motherland has, you know, uh, on earth it has its own language, it can talk, it can communicate. So to understand other species language, it, it's something like uh, it's out of the range of normal people to do. Mm -hmm. But at least if you listen to the, if you come to, if you can get to the source, you can be united with all that thing. Mm -hmm. Like you can meet with everybody, like, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, I mean, it's all connected. Uh, we are all connected. All the creatures mm -hmm. are connected in, at one point. If you can get there, then you can have the general feeling of everything uh, around us. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the trees, you can feel the animals, you can feel everything around you. You have more sympathy to other creatures and other species as well. So that's why we find the people who are enlightened, they are more careful about animals, about plants, about nature, about mm -hmm. the environment, because they, they can feel this, they can sense the life inside everything, even a stone, a mere mm -hmm. stone, it has a life inside it. And it can be really that intense that if you catch a stone and just meditate for a moment or two, try to find some life, you will feel there's some life inside the stone. The boy called the, I don't know what he did, catch a stone or stuff from the desert, and he was able to listen to the sea. Mm. He said, the desert used to be a sea, and he could able to, listening to sea inside the, some of the stones in the desert. So. It means life transform from one form to another, but mm -hmm. it keep it keep it keep its uh, core uh, as uh, as a united thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that, and it it really kept, it stopped me and thought. Well, stopped me in the book. I thought, especially that interaction between the Englishman and Santiago where they both kind of tried, he, Santiago was trying to read his books and the Englishman was trying to pay attention more to the caravan. And um, it, it caused me to step back and say, am I listening to the <laughs> universal <laughs> language? Am I listening to my environment? Or am I just busily you know, going about my day and not stopping to pay attention to what is around me? So I liked that, that concept. Does anybody else have some thoughts? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and go off of full screen mode so I can actually hear, see everybody's. Hold on. There we go. So I can scroll through everybody's videos. So Sandaram, I, I haven't heard from you. I'm not sure if you're wanting to speak here. Sundaram, are you there? All right, not sure if that's there or not. Okay. Um, all right, Carlos or Nawa, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, <clears throat> about universal language? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I have, I've been traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the universe, universal language is the smile. <laughs> yeah, I believe oh. it. Yeah. Okay. It's an un universal uh, conditional need mm -hmm. to feel that people need to feel very well. And yes. in that part, anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, I, I believe it. Yes. Yes, a smile is universal, isn't it? <laughs> it, it connects people. And I think that that... <laughs> now that, it's true, no? Yeah. Yes, very much, very much. And that what it shows is kind of that love or compassion or interest in that other person, that you see them as a person and you see them as someone, you know, that you want to connect with. And, um, and I think that that love, that underlying just um, love that comes along with a smile 
um, is very universal. All right, I agree. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Nawa? Yeah, uh, I do believe on it. And uh, basically, uh, my position was exactly the same uh, as you have described, you know, when mm -hmm. uh, the Englishman and the San Diego were exchanging their books and they were uh, traveling through and all that, interested on each other more and more uh, the time passes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that, that was my you know thought. It, it is yes, and at the same time, um, at the uh, same time, uh, even on the day-to-day -day life, uh, you know, things, people that we don't uh, maybe go close have. to the microphone, Nawa. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, even in the day-to-day -day life, yeah, we, when we meet uh, the people that not have a common language to communicate, uh, you know, maybe not speaking English, uh, you know, when I meet someone that do not speak English and, or my language, my native language, but we still can communicate. And if mm -hmm. someone is in a, a trouble, we can feel that. Mm -hmm. And you know, helping each other at those times, we don't really need to communicate through the word. It's, pro it's coming uh, by the feelings and by the situation. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Yeah, and, and anyone, and you've all had this experience, I'm sure, um, where you, the language might not be exactly the same, but the, there is a connection there, and you can feel that connection, and, um, and that there's this common compassion or love or um, feeling between two people that don't have the same words to express that but um, but can connect on that um, on that level that universal language level <laughs> um, I just think of I went down to Costa Rica and we my husband and I did a language immersion program for Spanish uh, down in Costa Rica and we did a six-week program but we lived with a several different families, few, three different families while we were down there. The first week, we didn't speak any Spanish at all <laughs> when we went down there. And that first family, we have more of a connection with than any of the rest of the families. And I don't know what it was about that connection, but you know, the first time we saw them, they just hugged us and they were, you know, they're ready to welcome us. And they were the most beautiful people, and there was very little word communication that happened in those two weeks that we were staying with them, but a very deep, um, deep love was built there. <laughs> All right. Okay, so just kind of moving on, let's see, let's get... The last, the last um, theme here the purification of the soul. And this was, you know, alchemy is that process of turning something from lead to gold and that purification process that happens through that process, I guess, the purification that happens through that process of not only the element, but the, the person who is able to make that transformation. Um, and this is something that, like I was talking about with Nawa earlier, is that I didn't get that at first. <laughs> I didn't get that theme. It was something that with my mind, I tend to think very, you know, sur you know, just surface level, I guess you could say. I, don't, I didn't d dive incredibly deep with it until I started researching it and getting some of these concepts um, of what that meant, that alchemy meant. And I, I understand the process that, that Santiago went through and the growth that he went through, but um, that purification process was something that had to be taught to me. <laughs> Anybody have some thoughts? Um, well, Carlos, will you go ahead and uh, will, do you feel comfortable reading that paragraph for us? Yes, I do. Yeah, go ahead there. Uh, <clears throat> The alchemists spend years in their laboratories observing the fire that purif purified the yeah. 
to find the metals. They spend so much time close to the fire that gradually they gave up the vanities of the world. They discovered that the purification of the metals had led to a purification of themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, how was Santiago purified by his experience or his experiences through the book? Do you kind of remember from your reading, Carlos? Yeah. Has it been oh, a while? I'm not, I, I'm not <laughs> sure. I read a long time ago, but the general idea about it, I, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, but just general idea. Mm -hmm. I, I can't explain about this book. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I, I remember uh, the. The, when the writer compared the alchemist, alchemist and the Santiago, the, the uh, people or person uh, learn or discover, find the, the truth in your life, uh, that they life. And the, the, um, the alchemist, and the, no, no, I think, oh, I confused the, the, the characters, no? Uh, because Santiago is alchemist, no? Santiago kind of becomes an alchemist over the process of the uh -huh. the book, yeah. But he has there is yeah. an alchemist that Forget it. the Forget Englishman, it. yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> well, so the the process for him, I mean, going from if you think in contrast, the very beginning of the book, he's a shepherd, right? And his experience is very limited, um, and then by the end you know, tra the transformation through the, the journey that he's been on um, to being, I mean, essentially an alchemist, but, but also just this, he's, he's learned different languages. He's had a huge amount of experience. He's overcome fear. He's understood better the universal language. Um, he, man, there's just an amazing amount of growth through the book. Um, that that has purified him and and helped him weed out some of those um, impurities, I guess you could say, uh, in his character and in in who he was. Was there any other specific incidences in the book, um, Radwan or Nawa, um, that have that stood out to you in this purification process for Santiago? I think to me there's uh, a few other moments, but uh, with everything he did or he went through, uh, or you know when he talked to the king, uh, or when he was with the, uh, the gypsies and all that, talking to them, uh, and the decisions he made or the steps he took after that that kind of building through the entire process mm -hmm. getting to the point. You know, it's just, there are multiple small events that helps him to kind of get through this purification process. And mm -hmm. to me in general, it's like it's everyone has to go through the process or it's more of having definite target, follow through it uh, and maybe at some point during the process has to go through the, uh, the tests. Mm -hmm. If you can pass those tests, okay, you know, you will get to that point. You will, mm -hmm. uh, you have the soul to get this uh, to that destination. But if you fail or give up during those, uh, you know, maybe midterm exam, then you may not get to the final exam. <laughs> and I think the only way not to get to the final exam is, is giving up. Because failure, yeah. like we've talked about, is part of the process. It's part of the purification of the process. process. Yeah. yeah. The only way that we won't get to that final is if we just give up and stop trying, right? So yeah. let's, uh, let's compare what, what they, what, how they do purification uh, for metal to what happened to Santiago. Okay. Uh, I just now, it's come to my mind now, there's a connection, like, the same for the metal, you need to uh, burn it till mm -hmm. some degree that it melts. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. After that, then when, when, when you can reshape the, 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 the melting uh, metal, you can add the secrets, the, the, they call it the elixir or whatever, the stone of something. Oh, yeah. they, they, add, they add some piece of it, then it will transform. Mm-hmm. So this is the alchemy basically for the metals. This is, this is just like a myth or something. But it has a relation to what happened to Santiago himself. Santiago was a simple shepherd who was just like the metal, you know. Mm-hmm. And he traveled all the way long, faced all the problems. This is the, the heat mm-hmm. that melts Santiago to a degree that he can reshape. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the touch of the uh, fancy thing that was added to his life was the people who keep you know motivating him like the Gepsi, the king and the alchemist and all the journey fatima and his love you know mm-hmm. all the things that was the fine touch in his life that kept him you know that changed his life transformed him mm-hmm. the interesting thing in this story that he just come back to the starting point yeah. at the end. And mm-hmm. it means that everybody has to look inside, deep inside himself. You have the best chance at your country. You don't need to travel outside. Okay? You, 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 but, but sometimes it's the journey. It's the journey, not, 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 not the, the, the destination. Mm-hmm. It's the journey itself mm-hmm. that can melt you to a, a, a degree that you can transform, mm-hmm. that you can get something good out of yourself. Yeah. So this is the interesting thing about this story. Yeah. Excellent. I love how you brought the two together here um, with alchemy and what, what that process was with the metal with Santiago's experience. And like you said, he could have stumbled upon the treasure there at the very beginning and gotten, had the, the worldly treasure, I guess. Um, but it was the whole experience and that that melting and that burning and that period that that allowed him to reshape himself and his experience and be, and who he who he really became. I love that. Excellent. Great summary there. Now with the this last one, Cindy, I'm going to have you read this for us. You do you mind? No, I don't. Let me open it again. I don't see the screen. Oh, okay. How, oh, that, oh, yeah, I see it now. You see it now? Will you read that for us? And it kind of it touches on a lot of what we've been talking about um, as far as this journey of his. Okay. Purification of the soul. What you still need to know is this. Before a dream is realized, the soul of the world tests everything that will learn along the way. It does this not because it is evil but so that we can, in addition to realize our dream, master the lesson we learn as we move toward that dream. That's the point as we we say in the language of the desert, one day of dirt just when the palm tree have appeared on the horizon. Every search begins with the beginner luck, and every shot ends with the vista being set separately tested, mm-hmm. severely, severely tested. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, they're talking about this. You know, at first it might be a little bit easier to start pursuing your dreams, but that fire gets hotter and hotter. <laughs> that, that experience, the, the, the tests along the way got more and more severe as he went. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on this? Let's see, we'll have, uh, Nawa, do you kind of have your, have some thoughts on this? Of just that process for San Diego? Yeah, I think uh, well, I probably already uh, thought of on this one a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I, I, I want to go ahead and maybe a little bit touch uh, on the beginner's luck. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, that's it. So what it seems on this one is when San Diego went to see gypsies and then he has the now he has he has the idea of 
his destination. Mm -hmm. So he was not fully in uh, agreement with gypsies at that point, saying you know, because of the demand gypsies had when he met with King, then okay, there is a it's the same thing coming from two different sources but the demands are different. Mm -hmm. so now, those dreams kind of getting into more, and for him, it's coming into more realistic view, mm -hmm. rather than just uh, depending on or committing something that he does not have, now he has to commit on something he already has. Mm -hmm. so, and when it moves to the next step on the way, uh, the problem uh, that he faces and uh, met with the crystal merchant, he helped him to build not only his dream, but also the merchant's dream, if mm -hmm. he really wishes to uh, fulfill those. Mm -hmm. But his views are a little bit different, that's a different part. So, but that's kind of, uh, the story is telling, okay, you have, you will get to a point then you, probably will fail before you succeed yes. and before you reach to the point. One of the, my favorite points in the book was actually when he got robbed there at the very beginning, you know, he takes this huge leap and he's all excited about this new journey and this new dream. And he goes and he's a little naive in it, right? He's a little naive in who he's trusting and how he's going about that. And he gets burned bad. He gets completely robbed and he has nothing. And I, I love that point where he decides that he decides that instead of saying, well, then this dream was wrong and you know, I, I, what a, what a joke. He chooses the opposite and he thinks, okay, well, what am I to learn about this? What do I need to do? You know, and there was a very real mindset shift for him of how he was going to see that challenge. You know, instead of a, a failure or, or the end of his road, he chose to see it as just a challenge and something that he had to overcome. I think the, the idea here, but I think it's maybe, it's coming from two different sources with the gypsies and the king, with the different commitment he has and the idea of Omen, Mm -hmm. Gives him that, you know, and those stones that King gave him help him to decide through and not only help him, but it kind of not let him to reverse his track. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the way I think about it. Yeah. Excellent. Anybody else have some thoughts on that before I move on? So we're just going to... I didn't pause here enough. <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about some of these themes, the personal legend, that danger of fear and how it can keep, a, that fear of losing something can keep us from pursuing that personal legend, that universal language. The, the, being able to talk about that universal language with all of you and all of us from different parts of the world and uh, different backgrounds, being able to talk about that universal language, that's a really unique thing, I think, in this setting. Um, and for all of us to really understand that concept and be like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's we, we've all understand that concept. Um, then the purification of the soul. Um, and we've touched on many other different themes. Um, and as we go through here, kind of coming back to the beginning, uh, we talked about these symbols and what these symbols mean. And I know that we could go deep into each one of these um, and, and figure out what exactly these might mean and how and, and what part they played in his journey. But um, we'll have to kind of do that on our own or with our friends and family as we, <laughs> as we uh, think more on this. But as we wrap it up, here today, what were some of the, the main takeaways that you feel like really stood out in your mind? And we'll kind of go through each person before we leave and the, the takeaways of what this, um, either through this discussion or through your readings, 
um, helped you to see things a little bit different. Cindy, I know you haven't actually haven't read the book, but just based on the discussion, what's something that you're going to take away from this today? Oh, I mean, like, uh, I think like the book teaches us like in order to be successful, we have to work beyond our comfort zone, you know, mm -hmm. never give up. Mm -hmm. Listen to your soul, what you really want to do mm -hmm. and do it. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Nike had something <laughs> really yeah, good there. Huh? Like, just do it. <laughs> All right. So that MCAT, we're just going to do it, right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, Radwan, how about you? Oh, you might be a little frozen here. Now I'll go ahead and we'll come back to uh, Radwan. Okay. You know, I just want to uh, say, Basically, uh, we take things for granted. Mm. That's not the case. Uh, that's a, that's always maybe a misrepresentation or misconception on our part. I just want to read maybe a couple of lines. The heat lasted until nightfall, and all the all that time he had to carry his jacket. But when he thought to complain about the burden of his weight, he remembered that because he had the jacket, he had withstood the cold of the dawn. That's that's my biggest take. Is just you know it's, we know that, as I said at the very beginning, that these are the things we know of, but we never follow through or take it uh, seriously. Uh, but just the, the thing is, there is nothing. Well, such thing as a granted. You know, you need to work to get through that process. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent, Nawa. Thank you, Carlos. How about you? Well, uh, I I enjoyed uh, about um, this contents. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah your discuss um, and uh, now I think better oh I will think more about uh, the experience and the connection between uh, our, uh, and between uh, our dreams mm -hmm. and, the, and the hard work yeah mm -hmm. and the, what uh, we believe yeah mm -hmm. And so I think it's very, they are powerful in our, uh, you know, where uh, we believe in, believe in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then Radwan, let's see, are you still here? I think you might have lost him. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go wrap it up because I'm pretty sure we could stay here all day talking about this topic, but you have things that you need to get to, I'm sure. So thank you so much everyone for coming and for discussing and adding your thoughts and your voice to the discussion. Um, I love hearing what you all have to say and the way that, that you um, have thought about this book because as you bring in your own experiences and your own kind of personality and your own situation, um, you're going to see things in a unique way. And I think that's the power and what we, you know, here at Pronunciation Pro, the real mission is that your voice matters, your experience, your expertise, who you are and what you have to contribute to the world is important. And our mission really is to give you the voice and give you that, um, give you that, those skills in your English. If English is the mode that you need is the language that you need in accomplishing that we want to make sure that you're you're strong in that skill set so that you can have that voice and have and and pursue that that purpose that dream that mission that you have um, in your life um, that you can better pursue that and if we're if if this is one step along the path then we want to be here to help you in that 
um, in that purpose and in that mission. So I thought that was a great, as I, I thought about all of you through reading this book, that was my takeaway is that if Pronunciation Pro is, is part of this path for you in pursuing that dream, then I am excited to be here and be a part of that path so that you can develop that, the skill sets needed to um, continue on this, this journey of yours. So thank you so much for uh, coming today and participating. And we'll look forward to the next book, which is actually um, the book called David and Goliath by um, Malcolm Gl uh, Gladwell. So I sent out an email about that yesterday and it's on the Facebook group too. Um, but yeah, pick up a copy and we'll be ready for the end of uh, the next book club meeting at the end of November. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye everyone. Have a great night and day. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Bye. Bye everybody.